Thank you very, very soon. Welcome back to The Late Late Show. OK, uh, now I'm delighted to say my next guest is a world-renowned live DJ, a former BBC Radio One DJ with almost two million listeners a day, and it's now, woo, and it's now, <laughs> kids in the house. Uh, uh, and now is a Sunday Times best-selling author, but of course, all of that pales into insignificance with her most impressive achievement, the fact that she was born and bred in a place called Dundrum. Would you please welcome Annie McManus! <laughs> Welcome home, Mrs. Oh, thanks. You know what? Standing behind that curtain, just mm. on your own for one minute, just it's quite intense. It is quite intense. You're just, like, you're, you really have. There's a lot of thoughts going on in, behind that curtain. What were the thoughts? Because I know that the family are in tonight. Um, the family are here. Mom's here. Yes. My big brother's here. My sister-in-law's here. Um, but the thoughts were all good, actually. Everything's great. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. We, I'm delighted to have you here because. Uh, this woman and I, we have a lot in common. Yeah. Uh, we're both from Dundrum. Now, I never Different knew Dundrums. that before today. Yes. So, your Dundrum, is, does your Dundrum have a shopping centre? My Dundrum, <laughs> my Dundrum has Brennan's shop. That's, right. what, that's what we got. Uh, we both went to Queen's. Yes. We both worked for the BBC. Uh, we you both have two kids. With English accents. Yes, boys. Just like... Me too. Yes. Wow. I mean, how, how are you coping with that? You're obviously, you, you obviously uh, used to be a DJ back in the day. You, no, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Um, I, I'm assuming, like me, you don't let the boys forget that they're Irish. No, my book actually is dedicated to them, and the line is, never forget that you're half Irish. They, they have no choice, yeah. <laughs> but as is the way, like, as anyone who is a parent knows, that as soon as you really want your child to do something, there's an instinctive compulsion to do the opposite on their part. Like, they know when you want them to do something and they know well to do the opposite. So they taunt me, you know, by waving English flags and, you know, in All the Euros right. or whatever, you know, they're like, England, and I'm recoiling in the corner. But like, <laughs> this, this is my problem, you know. I chose to live in England. I have an English husband that's... That's, it's just the way we're brought up here. It's the way, it's the way we're brought That's up. It's strange, I discovered that I was 33% Irish. No way. Yeah! Yay! I had my, you know, I did, what? I did one of those DNA tests, No darling. wonder you're so at home here. I know, I feel fabulous yeah. here. And that's why, 33%. Do you, know, do you know where in Ireland? Do you have any idea? Uh, Munster. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had to I look it up on the map. That. Is it any yeah. good? Yes, is it any good? It's great. Monster's great. Monster's great. Is that? Yeah. That's yeah. a bit horrified. I, I, I just love the way you said monster as a question. Monster? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know what a reaction, but uh, that DNA thing was amazing. Yeah, so, brilliant. Fab. There you go. Yeah. Uh, free pints in, in Cork and Carry anytime Control. you want that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Get them in. Get them in while you can. This book here, uh, which yes. is great, The Mess We're In, this is about a young girl who went from Dublin yes. to London. Yes. While you were writing this book, mm -hmm. you were thinking of coming back this way. Yeah, so I wrote the book, maybe like, yeah, it kind of the inception of it was during COVID. And as is the way with COVID, it made us all have big questions about ourselves and our lives and everything. I wrote a piece actually for the Irish Times during COVID about homesickness. And it had a huge reaction and it also kind of triggered in me um, the, the beginnings of a, like, OK, am I in the right place? You know, as you said, my kids have English accents. How the hell did that happen? Like, you kind, of, you kind of stop, you have a chance to stop and, like, assess your life and think, am I doing the right thing? And certain things, you know, my, my oldest son is going to secondary school this September. So you're thinking, God, if I move, I should move before then. I was looking at schools. I was making lists of pros and cons. Oh, oh so you, you were that close oh, to I, maybe yeah, coming I was, home. I was thinking so much about, about, about it, yeah. But my husband is from Yorkshire, um, and he, his work is in London. So there was lots of... I mean, I could really... I could talk to you till next week about all the, all the things, but basically we decided that we'll stick for now. So, and, so how long have you been over there? 20, 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. And it still doesn't quite feel like home. I never allowed myself to call it home, really. I knew it was home for my kids, but for me, home was always Dublin. And there's always that lovely fallback that you have to be like, sure, we can always just, we can always just go home, it's fine. Um, but I think what happened in the writing of this book was it, I, I wanted to write the book as a way to kind of explore those couple of years where I left Ireland 
and, and, and look at the choices of why and also think um, about who I was then and what it meant to leave. And my personal experience was that it was completely normal to go. Everyone I know pretty much went, like all of my school friends pretty much left um, Ireland and it was a thing, but I never really gave it the, I suppose, the, the, the thought that it deserved at the time. I just wanted out. I just wanted to see London. I wanted to have an adventure. But uh, I guess 25 years later, that decision is still, still affecting my life. I'm still here. I, I, I was reading something um, where you turned down an MBE. True. Um, why was that? Do I need to explain? I mean, that's probably as good an answer as any. They, yeah. No, no. I mean, yeah. it was in 2022, it, you know, the, even the language of it, the language, it was lovely to be recognised for services to broadcasting. I don't want to, you know, sit here and sound all pompous, but it was really nice. But the language of that I had an issue with. It's quite mad. It's like something from another century. It's like, we want to submit your name to... Uh, Oh, to the excellent order of the... To be an honorary member of the excellent order of the British Empire. It's like, it's 2022, lads. Like, this, what is this language? And also, I don't want to be associated with the British Empire. I did history in school. I know, I know about that. And um, if they change the language, I'd be really happy to receive it. But right now, language-wise, I just wasn't happy to. So I wrote to them. They were really nice about it. And that was it. Would, would you ever accept a, a dame hood? Yep. <laughs> Damn rebel. Just Damn rebel. Have but you I... not been offered something yet? You should be given something. No, darling, my past is checkered. <laughs> I'm sure that comes in. I should have never written that book. It's the 33% from Munster. <laughs> yeah, that, that's no. the problem. But it is, I think that's, that's quite a lot. But apparently, apparently they can revoke them too. You know, so like, well, that, yeah. I mean, that, that comes with, you know, in the small print. It's like, we do have the right to revoke this. You know, the post um, office woman's given hers back. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's given hers back. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they can take the MBE back off you. Um, well, not you, because you're not taking it. No, I'm not there taking it. There you go. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. off with it. And listen, no, I mean, no nice judgment. No, yeah. no, no judgment. You know, uh, you know, I'm sure lots of people have taken them, and that's grand, but it wasn't for me. It, I didn't want to be in that club. Sounds good. Uh, the club that we do want to be in mm. is your early club that starts at six and finishes at midnight. This is the greatest thing of all time for old ravers like you and me. Tell us about <laughs> this. <laughs> so it's called Before Midnight. It does what it says on the tin. It's a direct reaction to me uh, kind of coming out the back of COVID and having young kids and thinking, like, w getting back into DJing in nightclubs again means getting back into every weekend, coming home five, six in the morning and feeling like I'm constantly jet lagged. And that's really hard when you have small kids. And it wasn't, it just didn't feel like I was going to be able to continue doing that. So I kind of, in my head, I, I thought, right, I just can't do this anymore. I'm just going to have to find, I'm just going to have to DJ festivals and that's it. And then... Um, and I thought, I'll just try this. I'll put it out on Instagram and see what people think about the idea of doing an earlier one. And, oh, my God, like, I've never had such a big reaction to anything I've, I've done or put out there. People just went mad for it. And you know what's cool, Patrick? It's like, it, yes, people say it's for older people. It's basically for anyone who wants to sleep. Anyone. So it's all... <laughs> honestly, it's all ages, uh, you know, and you have young women who bring their mom and their grandmother. You have heavily pregnant women who come, postpartum women. It's 75% women who come, which, as you can imagine, makes it the most fun, lovely, kind, uplifting, you know, atmosphere. Um, and it's all sorts. And it's just so fun. And everybody's in bed by 12. And everyone's in bed by 12. Well, I finish at 12 and then they go home. And a lot of the time, they don't want to go home <laughs> and they go somewhere else, but that's on them. That's on them. <laughs> You're out of here. Yeah, that's on them. Uh